Welcome to our health committee. I'm going to call it to order. Sorry, we're a little bit late getting started, but uh, we're all here in County Four, and I'd like to welcome our uh, staff and our guests. And uh, let's all stand. And uh, Mr. Baker, would you do this in our invocation, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, let's thank you for this beautiful weather that we might come together and, and do your work and, and let us ever be mindful and, and watch over the troops that are overseas and our elders that are suffering and uh, the, the people that, that need us to do a good job so that we can make their lot in life better. With your help, uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mr. Baker. Call, oh, please. Joe Crittenden? Here. Linda O'Leary? Present. Joe Angren? Here. Joe John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Audra Connor? Uh-huh. Meredith Brady? Here. Chuck Hoskins? Tyler Keene? Here. John Keener? Jackie Bob Martin? On it. Rabbi and Scott Pout? <coughs> David Thornton? Kara Cowan Watts? Uh-huh. Okay. Ellis uh-huh. Yardy? Uh-huh. Don Gardner. I must keep oh, over him. I'm <laughs> sorry. Did you miss him? Is he on there? Yes. Oh, okay. Just don't ring the bell. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, next on the agenda is the approval of the February 13th Probably. minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. All in favor, aye. Aye. All the same sign. Minutes are approved. <coughs> Starting now with our reports and uh, Jim, uh, Claire Moore. Service unit is up. Okay. Welcome, sir. Thank you, OCO. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I want to extend my congratulations to Sequoia girls on their three peat. And hopefully, they'll get a four peat. Uh, my daughter, my daughter-in-law coaches at uh, Oral Roberts University, and uh, the women the, on the women's team, and they play on Saturday against Purdue in Minneapolis. Uh, The uh, leadership uh, reviewed the uh, feasibility of providing a pap smear clinic, and the reason being is that we wanted to uh, address our, our GIPA goals, and uh, we uh, put those down, and we have out of the four of the five, I mean, uh, three, of the, three of the four, we have addressed our, our, our meeting our goals at midterm, and the pap smear that we felt like that we needed to have a, a Saturday women's clinic, and that will start on, I think it's on the 17th. <coughs> March 17th. Uh, I'm uh, presently, uh, I and the uh, uh, clinical director and the chief nurse executive are preparing a business plan for improving our OBGYN services uh, to be equal to or better than the community standards of care. We're planning for the implementation of epidurals, the construction of initially two labor delivery and recovery and postpartum rooms. Uh, and so I have met, I've met with the, the physicians and I'll be meeting uh, tomorrow with the nurses, uh, leadership, and uh, then I'll bring uh, everyone that's involved in that operation together uh, to go over the, the final, uh, we're just brainstorming ideas right now. And uh, we'll, we'll do that collectively and then I'll, I'll put it to the paper and then I'll share that with you. Down the down the road, and then if you have any, you know, if you have any suggestions that you'd like to put forth, that uh, I certainly welcome. Them. I went last night, just for your information. I went to to attended uh, the uh, uh, a town meeting over in Broken Arrow, uh, over at the uh, northeastern campus, and uh, the the local the Broken Arrow St. Francis out of Broken Arrow is relocating their operation out to uh, 169 highway and so they had their uh, they had their overview and a, a town meeting the existing facility at Broken Arrow will be an urgent care clinic and uh, the uh, the emergency uh, services will be out on 169 the Broken Arrow and Tulsa are in negotiations about the property because it's 300 yards into Tulsa and they're trying to get it annexed so that it can be Broken Arrow. If that doesn't happen, uh, St. Francis is still going to assist Broken Arrow with, with uh, tax revenue and, and uh, they want to make it a community hospital. So um, 
Uh, it's going to be a quite a, it's a four-phase facility and it's going to be quite an operation. It's uh, currently the heart, heart hospital that they're converting over. The, uh, uh, back to Claremore on, uh, on information uh, systems, uh, we switched over to daylight savings so we had to, to make all the necessary uh, uh, gyrations uh, and, <coughs> and we're very successful. We only had a couple uh, glitches and we got those rectified real quickly. And we are encountering some problems with our, our voice paging system, so we're working on that. Um, you have the occupancy rates uh, for the month and, uh, and then your cumulative totals. And our third party collections, uh, we're uh, up, but we're only up about 167,000. And we have a big backlog because we, when we switched over to electronic health records, it caused a backlog and we've hired coders and we're going to have to probably contract to, to catch up. And once we catch up, I, I anticipate that our, our revenue will do the same. The percentage of accounts receivable is 3%, which is excellent. I think the, uh, uh, the standard for uh, IHS is 16% and we're at 3 um, The uh, CHS activities, we have a CHS case manager doing very well. We have six cases that we identified, five that we submitted, and one is pending submission. Uh, our budget shows a deficit, and the reason being is that we've transferred, we've cost, done some cost shifting due to the new, new UFMS system, our new financial system, and we're having to move it into hospital and clinics. And then we'll have to make some reconciliations to uh, to balance the books. Uh, I give uh, recruitment and retention. I uh, showed you the uh, the uh, positions that we're uh, advertising for, and uh, I, I did get to go to. Uh, uh, I attended the Clinton uh, opening as as did uh, uh, Ed and and uh, and Gloria. I, I didn't think that. As soon as I said that, I, it was <laughs> it was Ed and I were there, and uh, uh, they have a very good, uh, very nice facility, and uh, uh, it takes the place of their hospital. And uh, Dr. Grimm, uh, Charles Grimm, was the keynote speaker, and the Cheyenne and Arapaho tribe, uh, the Cheyenne and Arapaho chiefs, uh, bestowed upon him a, a headdress. Which is a, a huge honor, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, John Darty. Uh, John Darty is back at, at work today. He, he'll be soon to start on three days a week on a limited basis, and uh, uh, when he's when he's uh, not there, then uh, uh, Dale Keel will be the acting area director. Uh, the Joint Commission, I mean the uh, Joint uh, uh, Conference, it will be in Tulsa, and Ed, Ed will speak to that as that he's the chair on, on that. Um, we have a continuing resolution through the through the end of the fiscal year, and we're waiting for some instructions from IHS headquarters and area finance on how to obligate the funds. Our new housekeeping construction building is. Uh, it's almost completed, and we worked out the problem with the uh, architect and the, the construction firm about the dock. So I think uh, I think we've got that resolved. We fin finally finished the hallway and the surgery clinic and GMS, and now we can clean the hospital. Uh, it's filthy, and it needs to be cleaned, and because of all that dirt and tracking it through everywhere. And so I'm, I've got to get with housekeeping, and and we we've, we've got to do some spring cleaning. Uh, charge measure doing well, and uh, we've got our performance standards that we're trying to pull together and submit for uh, our midterm evaluations. Any questions? Oh, Mr. Baker's got one. He's got work in three days a week called golf season starting. Or? Yeah, I think so. I think he, I think he gets to work on a swing next week, but yeah, <laughs> he, he can't swing it yet. But uh, he's, he's got it figured out. I think. Other questions? Uh, Mr. Leary? Yeah. 
Uh, how are we progressing on the emergency room on any additional space or whatever? Well, the uh, as soon as the uh, housekeeping is built, then we get in and go to the design of the ER and make some determinations on how we're going to do it, whether we're going to do it in-house or, or but we'll have to design the, the space. We'll of course, we'll vacate the housekeeping and move them into the new space, and then that that's adjacent to the, the emergency what's your, room. What's your projection? Uh, probably two or three years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it depends on the design and, and the timelines that they build into the into design. I don't I don't have a timeline yet. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Yes, just one question. Do you remove tonsils if you uh, qualify at the hospital? Huh? Do I remove? Do, do I remove tonsils? No. Oh. The hospital, yeah. or you know where you're from. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> do they? Uh, do you remove tonsils at that hospital if they're needed? Well, that's a medical question. Gloria, help me out. I think we do. I don't, I don't. I don't have a have a person on staff all the time that does that. But in the past, Hastings and Criminal both has had an EMT come usually a day a month and do that. I don't know. I know Hastings still does, but I don't know if they're more. If we if we don't do it in house, we'd probably refer it out. Do you have a specific thing you need to talk to me about? Well, I just I need to talk to everybody. I've been trying for the last three months to get a girl, 17 years old, going to school at Locust Grove, and she works. And she's been down here, and she's been denied twice, if not the third time. I'm, of the last week, I haven't heard anything. Okay, I'll get with you. Right. Hey, Claremore Hastings. Uh, this was at, this one here is at Hastings, or the, from the clinic, but it's just not been done. Okay, get, but I'll I get. want to know if these are in, uh, hospitals were removing tonsils. Well, I, I truly don't know because, uh, but uh, we either, like Gloria said, we either contracted in on, a, and I'd have to see if we're still doing that arrangement, or we would go out. So I would have to, I would have to talk with you afterward and get the name. <coughs> but I don't know the answer to your question. Okay. Well, the uh, reason why I'm asking is just that she's been denied twice, if not three times. And uh, so I don't know. I came through here with it. I mean, not here, but um, here. To, well, tell it all. I just can't find nobody but Tammy, and she works with Brent. I mean, uh, Brent. Yeah. And uh, so <clears throat> I don't know where I'm at. I mean, That's the only thing is, I just need to talk. Okay, let me talk to I'll step out and make a call, and then we'll talk after the meeting. All right. Okay. Other questions for Jim? Thank you, Jim. Good report. Next up, we have Mr. McLemore with uh, Hastings Indian Medical Clinic. Or Center, excuse me. Jim. 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 I know most of you, Mr. Chairman, can I interrupt this? Uh, Mr. Martin, yes. Uh, what Mr. Keener is asking uh, Mr. Michael Moore to do is uh, give his whole report in Cherokee. <laughs> and my response was that I speak just barely well enough to get by with what I'm saying now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McLemore, you know, Mr. Martin brought up a good point there. I, I was thinking as I was sitting here enjoying that, that 
we might ought to approach it like they do when at tongues at certain church services. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, need a, they need an interpreter. <laughs> he said, uh, it's so pretty out there, we ought to be outside, you know. And I said, yeah, there'd be about four or five of us leave out here. <laughs> I said, it's turning springtime, it's getting beautiful outside, let's move our meeting outside. I said, okay, so. It would be a good day for that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I bring your attention to our handout here. Uh, our, and this is not a mistake now. <laughs> this financial status, no reason. Not a mistake. Speaker uh, Fraley uh, is a. Uh, you know, <laughs> but we're doing very well now. Of course, as we talked many times in the past, the reason for that is we put the brakes on some spending and some staffing, and you're going to see the pinch. But that's the nature of the world we live in financially now. I mean, we're we're managing within the resources we have, but. You know as well as I do, there's not enough resources to meet all of the needs. Right. And so we're trying to make these resources stretch. And as of uh, the end of February, if you look about two-thirds of the way down the page, right-hand column, total of the funds, we have about seven, almost $800,000 positive balance. And then uh, we project that we'll be able to carry that through to the end of the fiscal year ending at about $800,000 at the very bottom line projected to September 30th, 07. <clears throat> now, in the, at the very back of the handout, there are three pages, or three or four, uh, or maybe five. But anyway, there's a <coughs> press release from the Indian Health Service dated February 6th, 07. And uh, <clears throat> the president is proposing a 7% increase for the Indian Health so uh, Service 08 budget. And uh, there, <clears throat> that represents a considerable improvement for the Indian Health Service line items identified. Uh, for a total recommended increase of about $211 million across the Indian Health Service uh, uh, budget line items. Uh, <coughs> the, the, the total, when you factor in the estimated collections of about $700,000, you look at the 2008 uh, proposed budget, uh, $700,000 plus estimated insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, private insurance collections, uh, the total IHS budget is about $4.1 million with what we also collect. Now, that's uh, $700,000 of $4.1 billion. <coughs> $700 uh, million. Dollars. And we are looking at, uh, for us, about uh, 31, $31.5 million dollars in collections for Hastings alone. And our total appropriation is about 22 million. So our total operation is about 53, 54 million dollars. Uh, does anybody have any questions about that financial status report? Uh, this is it's a very good report as far as we're concerned. Now there may be some concerns about how the how those expenditures are actually uh, allocated throughout the program there, but, uh, you know, you look at salaries, staffing, and there's uh, 16 million of the 22 million so far that goes to staffing. I mean, that, that's the key part of our program is people. That, that's what our services are, uh, medical services. Uh, you know, Ed, that, that's probably opposite to what you were expecting, right? Well, yeah, we were expecting to either hold firm or, or uh, see Hello. some reduction, and that will be a little ahead of uh, inflation, medical inflation, pharmaceutical inflation, all factored in. Yeah. I think we'll see uh, real increases, not, not just nominal dollar increases. Good. <coughs> so, uh, 
something we're going to uh, we're sorry to see in the next page in the handout uh, the Hastings hotline uh, first page is uh, Commander Rod Copley is uh, finishing up about a 24 I beg your pardon 29 year career as a commissioned officer he's retiring uh, we're going to miss him you can look and see all of those things that he's involved in he's involved in area national activities and I hate to really speculate about what he's involved in in that bottom right hand picture <laughs> but anyway we're going to miss him he's a technical expert in the RPMS the resource and patient management system he's a technical expert in the emergency room package of RPMS he's a national trainer in that package, he goes all over the place and trains people throughout the Indian Health Service in that package. <clears throat> He's our key person for strategic planning, master planning, patient flow analysis, uh, joint commission uh, accreditation. He, he does a whole bunch of things with GIPRA. He's uh, area involved in the area GIPRA committee. So, so he's going to be missed and if there were any way to keep him around uh, uh, I think we would try to do that. He's been recognized for superior management uh, so we want to uh, have a little going away something for him probably in a couple of weeks maybe a few days before he leaves he's going to be taking annual leave for about 60 days before his retirement date on June 1st so he's actually going to be out of our, our system on uh, about April 1st uh, Hastings was recognized at the recent National Combined Councils meeting for taking the lead in the EHR implementation. If you'll recall, way back in, we started the discussion about this, way back in 03 and 04 when we first, Jim and I first came into the picture here, and uh, things got kind of blurry maybe then, but we <coughs> picked up uh, on some of those things and now they're starting to clear up in terms of EHR, the benefits that we see, the speed with which people get through the system. <coughs> Generally speaking now, now we have some areas we can improve upon, but generally speaking, if you look at the total amount of time spent in our outpatient clinics by patients, uh, that EHR has helped tremendously get get that process uh, speeded up and we were given that recognition by the National <coughs> Combined Council's uh, Office of Information Technology in uh, San Diego. Uh, I would point out to uh, also on page four there's pharmacy news. Uh, a number of our folks were recognized uh, uh, for, uh, as uh, outstanding young pharmacists of the year. I um, uh, don't know about the older folks, but at least these younger ones were recognized. Ivan Cheatham and Brian Wren. Brian is our pharmacy chief uh, at Hastings, and he's, uh, he's a young fellow who's uh, t brought in a whole bunch of uh, improvements in that system. Um, and, and a number of other folks, uh, Stacy Thornton, was given a USPHS commendation medal and some other things there. Uh, we had a chili cook-off. You can see honorable mention. Uh, there's an anesthesia department uh, employee activity committee. And Dr. Garrett received the Physician Dedicated Service Award from the National Council of Clinical Directors. She's recognized for over uh, or about 20 years of service at Hastings, uh, uh, dedicated service. Uh, right below that notice on page 7, you'll see there's uh, considerable progress on our diabetes, uh, diabetic service unit, service area. Uh, of course, that yellow building will be covered with uh, stucco or some sort of a covering there won't be a bright yellow building up there for much longer. The interior work, the studs, the joists, the electrical, plumbing, uh, air handling, duct work, all of that is being uh, completed. Uh, so we should see 
that ready for occupancy probably by the end of July, uh, first part of uh, August, maybe the middle of August. Uh, the very last item I would bring to your attention are the vacancy rates in the Indian Health Service, and that's the very last page in this handout. <coughs> You'll see current vacancy rates for some health professions. Dentists throughout the Indian Health Service, we have 25% vacancy rate. And so as a result, our GIPRA numbers are down for dental access, dental sealants, and those sorts of things. But that's what we're being measured on. But we can't pay dentists enough to bring them into our system versus what they can make in the private sector. Ex unless they're commissioned officers, most of them. You know. Nurses, 18% vacancy rate, and on and on. You'll see that. Uh, the land acquisition that we've been talking about for a number of years, we are at the point of closing on that. We've gotten all of the approvals. We've gotten the Congressional Department of Justice. We've gotten all the approvals throughout the system. And now we're waiting on a check for one-third of a million dollars for eight and a half acres. And once we get the check in the hands of uh, Tahlequah Abstract and Title Company, They'll arrange for closing. They've tentatively scheduled it for the 29th of March. And then we'll be the owners of that eight and a half acre. We'll clean it up and start really getting down to um, definitive plans on uh, how best to use that property, along with the Cherokee Nation and, and the other property as well, because we look at this as a unified health system. And finally, I would uh, like to... Uh, also, uh, add the congratulations from Hastings to the Sequoia teams for their outstanding season, coaching staff, and the uh, school, Cherokee Nation in general, because about half the Cherokee <laughs> Nation was there, I think, you know, in the stands. Uh, the, the, for a little uh, th uh, 3A school to have that kind of following says, quite a bit for the sense of ownership uh, that people have for that uh, uh, program up there. And, uh, you know, I spent four years there, and I recall we barely could get our own families to come to the ball games, <laughs> you know, and when it was under BIA control. And when the Cherokee Nation stepped in and took ownership, and it gave a sense of ownership to all Cherokee citizens, so... We certainly congratulate the girls for being state champions and the boys for just coming a quarter of an inch short of becoming state champs, but they played well. Mr. Carvin? Ed, do you think the land in uh, Cherokee County is worth $40,000 an acre? Oh, we've had a tough time with that one, but <clears throat> that's what our appraisers agreed on with the seller, but you know, I, I'm a whole lot richer than I thought I was. You never know then. what's down below the surface, right? So it might be something down there. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Uh, yeah. yeah. Any other questions for Ed? <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Good report. Next up, we have Cherokee Nation Health Services. And oh, I'm sorry, Jim. I have the, the answer to that question. Uh, and then I'll get with you afterward and, and get the the girl's name afterward. But the answer is that we do not do tonsillectomies in, in our facility. Uh, our doctors do refer out, so that makes it part of the CHS uh, system. And unfortunately, it's probably not a high enough priority, and that's why they got denied. But I'll get with you after this meeting, and we'll, we'll talk. Thank you. That's what I wanted to know, because I know all about it. Wow. You know, I just wanted to know so I could hear it from the hospitals and right. stuff. Then, uh, of course, I know it's all been worked through referral and all this type of stuff. And I've explained what referral means. And I've, uh, I've done everything, and, and I just want to know why. Then uh, the parents, what I can't understand is <coughs> their uh, the daddy is disabled. I'm sure if they had the money and the way the girl suffers, sometimes she's, her throat, uh, I would say the two tonsils, 
probably rub one another once in a while. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll uh, get with you after the meeting and, and see what we'll do. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're up, Melissa. Well, Thank you. Um, also, um, Mr. Keener, um, we can, Dr. Brim and uh, Ed and Jim can compare notes after he gets the name from you. And there's, they do do those in house at Hastings, so there's a possibility that she could be sent to Hastings. So we'll see what we can do. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, Cherokee Health Partners performed 133 procedures this month um, for a net gain of $39,000. We were back up a little bit. We had been experiencing a little drop in procedures due to not having a full-time cardiologist. Um, but that's coming back up now that we do have not a full-time cardiologist, but at least full-time cardiology reads on those uh, tests. We are still interviewing and um, Continuing on answering <coughs> questions from Oklahoma Health Care Authority on the PACE application. Um, if you've been down um, 4th Street, you've seen the facility is actually coming up. It's under construction and moving right along. We do still hope that we're able to open um, early fall of this coming year, of this year. Um, we are... Uh, in a joint recruiting effort um, with OU taking the lead on finding an oncologist for um, our, on, our uh, cancer program. Um, we are going to co-host with Hastings and the Tulsa Urban Clinic the next joint count, uh, combined council meeting that is going to be hosted in Tulsa on April 24th and 25th. Um, if you're interested in attending that, um, we'd be glad to provide you an agenda and the information, and we would like to extend an invitation to each of you to do that um, since we'll be co-hosting that with them. Um, we, um, uh, Kelly Ketcher and I went uh, to the Native American Finance Conference on invitation and um, gave a presentation there on our health care financing construction bonds that we just did. And um, I don't know how Kelly felt, but I thought it was um, a pretty proud moment for Cherokee Nation in that we were, uh, what I was most proud of is out of that whole conference, and there was a thousand people there probably, um, we were the only tribe that had um, issued uh, health care construction bonds uh, and paying them back through some other resource besides gaming money um, because we're paying ours back through our third party billing. And so I think that speaks a lot about um, our infrastructure development and our stability in our healthcare infrastructure system. So I was pretty proud of that. Um, our construction projects are going fine. Um, Salisaw. We are they're beginning the uh, installation of the equipment there. Um, we are looking at a, um, a com full completion date there um, somewhere toward the end of next month. We have tentatively scheduled um, David and Phyllis grand opening there for May the 10th at noon. Um, that's a tentative schedule at this time until we are uh, one hundred percent sure on that completion date and but we're working on the agenda and so that that looks like what we're gonna try to do there um, the facility looks very nice um, no water is coming along in the uh, currently working on interior drywall and uh, the metal roof and the ephus there um, still looking at um, a late spring early summer like June May June date for no water uh, Muskogee is moving along rapidly. Um, they are um, have that on a fast track system, and I think if you go by there and look, you'll see that it is on a fast track system. Because I'm amazed every time I go by about how much more that they have done there. But that work is moving um, very fast. We've been um, in the process of selecting and purchasing. Um, our artwork for all of those facilities and the equipment for all of those facilities. We continue to work with Tahlequah City Hospital on a few joint endeavors and are currently looking at a couple of health business ideas there. Um, 
in Bartlesville. We've been meeting with James Phillips Hospital there to uh, talk about uh, our contracting uh, partnership and how we might be able to expand that with the new NOWADA clinic opening there. Continuing imaging our medical records. Um, our, you'll see in your packet our third-party collections. Um, they continue to improve. Um, they have, uh, if we stay on the road that we're looking at now, we'll be uh, about a million and a half above what we collected last year, which was an increase from the year before. Uh, and actually, this would be the largest increase that we've ever had in private insurance collections. And um, that is mainly due to a couple of things. One is that we've had a, um, we implemented a, a very concentrated focus follow up. Uh, billing program that's working very well um, and also along with partnership with Hastings we're implementing a, a what's called a quivotic system and it's a, a third party eligibility validation software program and the easiest way I can describe it is it is a software program that you put somebody's information in and it goes out and searches to see if they have any third party um, information out there that we don't have on our records that we can capture and um, it's um, helped us to eliminate already over um, 5,000 um, erroneous insurers and duplicate insurers so I think that's really going to help our billing system and help us to increase our collections and reduce our rejected claims and, and get our payments in, in a more timely manner. Um, we also are um, continuing with our electronic health record implementation plan. Um, again, in partnership with Hastings, um, they're helping provide some leadership on that since they have already implemented <coughs> EHR and it has had um, great rewards for their health system and we look forward to those same rewards. Um, Dr. Graham has been leading a, a group to complete, uh, develop and complete a um, prevention plan that is including um, obesity and chronic disease, um, um, which also has a worksite wellness uh, type uh, um, program within that. And um, that's getting pretty exciting and we're looking forward to the finalization of that and starting to implement some of that. Which goes along with, um, I think I, maybe I told you last month that Cherokee Nation had been selected as one of the nine pilot uh, sites across the United States for a chronic care initiative from headquarters, IHS. And um, Dr. Grimm has been leading the implementation of that. Um, Salina Clinic has been uh, selected as our pilot site, and that's going very well. And is, it just folds right into our chronic care prevention plan. So we're excited about that and look forward to it. Um, our diabetes program and behavioral, pro pro behavioral health programs have uh, moved their offices over to 4th Street also. Um, so if you haven't made it by um, and you have time, you might want to stop by there and see their new offices. We also um, have uh, are continuing to work on some uh, <coughs> emergency medical health um, preparedness plans like pandemic uh, flu plan and some others. Um, we're, our diabetes prevention program is is uh, going strong. We've held a lot of uh, core after core activities in that program and have um, started a new class in, in Adair County. Our, um, we've completed our patient satisfaction access to care um, survey. It's, it was very good um, for any one of the clinics that didn't meet the, the threshold of 85%. Um, we've implemented a plan of action for them to get that in alignment, which was very few, and so we've done that. Um, our CDC program, who is here today because they have a couple of resolutions on the agenda, um, have been preparing for uh, the new grant submittal uh, that funds their whole program. Um, and Kim will talk about that later when she presents the resolutions. Um, in uh, NOWADA, the, uh, 
uh, clinic administrator there um, facilitated the meeting uh, on the annual Bonita Chamber of Commerce calf fry. So he's out doing some community activities as well as our other clinics, and we appreciate them spending time in those communities and being a part of the community. Um, we um, at J Clinic uh, have started a um, weight loss class there. Um, have 13 community people that are in that class, and it's going very successfully. Um, we look forward to some successes on those. Our WINGS program had about 10 events last month with a lot of participants um, and have about 1,200 um, active WINGS members now. We have um, smoking cessation classes going in numerous communities um, with lots of participants. Have been working um, with Head Start on some joint smoke-free home type stuff and some schools. We've been working with their SWAT teams, getting the students working against tobacco, getting them going and helping them. Um, we also received 16 applications from communities um, for summer youth fitness day camps. Um, so we'll be uh, selecting those and moving forward with implementing them. Been working in some communities, implementing kitchen creation uh, classes. Uh, Ms. Watts got a question. Mm -hmm. um, how much funding do we have? I don't know the answer to that. I would like to consider funding all of them. I mean, if they're valid. I'm sh I, I, I assume that we'll have enough to do that. If they met the criteria and Next all month, that. can you let us know? Yeah, uh, probably sooner than that. Late. Okay. I Thank think you. just call Lisa and we can follow up with her and see. I think that was our intent because we're funding that out of steps. And then I found some different funding for ones outside of the step grant. Okay. Thank you. Um, our uh, community health nursing um, made about 150 home visits. Um, EMS was very busy. Um, Jack Brown has a census of 22, which is at capacity. So. Um, they're moving forward with their plans. Um, Behavioral Health was very busy, had about 3,500 patients last month. I think in your packets is the workload activity um, report for um, the clinics and for the new charts and the patient visits. Um, and um, let's see, it's contract health services for the month of February, um, we processed 2,264 referrals. We approved 2,149 and denied 115. Um, I think that's very good. Our, when you look across the average of those, we've really been able to, um, um, through some of our programs that we've sent through for um, <coughs> additional funding, um, for the strategic programs, we've been able to meet a lot of that need, so that's going very well. So I'm very happy with our health <coughs> program. Uh, Melissa, um, our, our um, Melissa, yes, Ms. Yard, do you have a question? Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I was almost uh, done. I was going on a roll. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that's okay. I didn't know whether this would, is contract kills, but okay. I, I possibly have a question that concerns one of those 140 something that they okay. give me. Uh, what is our policy on cataract surgery? Dr. Brown, how We work with Northeastern State University, and we have an ophthalmologist that we, through partnership with them, um, basically employ his services two days a week. Right now, we do cataracts. We do most of those cataracts, though, at Tahlequah City Hospital. And what we try to do is... Glory. Can you stand up a little close to the mic? She's not picking it up. I'm sorry. I was trying to be off the record. That's <laughs> oh, why oh. I stayed back there. Okay. Um, it's right above the Oh! Because <laughs> 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 I looked at that one. <laughs> They're high tech now. <laughs> so, what we do is what we work with NSU. We have this ophthalmologist that we fund a couple of days a week. He's doing most of his surgeries right now at Tahlequah City Hospital. What we try to do is Basically, for everyone that has a payer, so if they're Medicare, Medicare pays for the for the hospital fee. We get enough money that we're able to pay for a one that we don't have any money for. 
And then, of course, the ophthalmologist is already paid for through us. The one thing we've been working with um, Dr. Ferris from, from Hastings is trying to get some surgery time there. And when I talked to her last, Dr. Blue, who's the chief of surgery, had found some time um, to allow Dr. Castillo to start doing surgeries there. And we were waiting on a piece of equipment, um, a head thing for the, for the OR bed, so that um, he can do his surgeries. And, and I don't know if that's where we are. We've got the same um, problem again. <laughs> we're also going to let him do um, um, small procedures like taking off um, little bumps and stuff near the eyes too down in our um, procedure room in the surgery. Because we want to optimize our operation time, operating time as much as possible because we know that generates money and generates more service. And so we are more than happy to um, provide you know, that operation time to Dr. Castilla because, you know, we want to keep that operating room working eight to five so that... Is there a priority list of those patients that need the surgery? I mean, do you have... How do you select who gets to have the surgery? They, they come in. I mean, if they have been seen by, by one of our optometrists out in our clinic, then they get referred into Tahlequah to see the ophthalmologist, and then it's, if it's something that's, you know, part of it is based on medical necessity and how severe it is, and then part of it's just based on time. They get put on a, on a list that we just kind of work through as, as we can get them in. Okay, so if they've gotten a denial letter a couple of times, then what, I mean, you know, this is a 50-year-old woman, I'm talking to specific now, about 50-year-old woman, she's not, you know, Medicare qualified. Did it come from did it come from us or did it come from Claremont? It came from NSU Hastings, I guess. I don't know. Uh, that's why I don't know where the letter when I asked her, she said I don't yeah, know. Bring us that because I mean there's a couple of things with her. One, at fifty years old, you know, that we want to get her back to work. I mean that's a, a big priority for us. Well, she's self they're self employed, you know, her husband. I don't have the name yeah, number, still, I was just contacted. Still want to get her back to work even if she is self employed. Okay, so and, I so just, if you can get her name, because that's somebody that should be done. Okay. And as we expand services, I mean, our whole idea behind Hastings is that we can, you know, expand services into Hastings, try to pull out of Telco City, um, you know, and we want to be able to take care of more people. So if you get her name, we should be able to. Okay. Now I'll just have her to call you. Just have her call Melissa or I, either one. Okay. And we'll get it. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Graham. You're welcome. Go ahead, Melissa. Okay. Thank you. Um, we do have three um, provider vacancies, one at Stillwell, um, Salina, Salisaw, we're currently interviewing, have interviewed, so hopefully we'll be filling those in the very near future. I also attached to your report a health policy update, um, which has all of the policy and legislative items that we're working on within health. Um, again, um, always encourage you to read that, and as elected officials, if you feel like there's something you would like to help us with or that you're interested in specifically, if you let me know that, we'll be uh, more than honored and privileged to have you to, to do that for us. Um, let's see, it talked about, and I think that concludes my report. Questions for Melissa? Uh, Mr. Leary. Uh, Melissa, we visited in the past a couple of times about the self determination uh, regarding copay that's been discussed before, and you all are still looking at that. What's the update status on that? Dustin? I don't have an update. I haven't done anything since last time we talked about it. Uh, but you're still considering a copay? Well, I, it's not that I ever considered a copay, it's that we are looking at various ways in our programs that we can implement the self-help legislation um, from 18 months or two years ago, however long ago that was. And so we have various options um, of ways that we can do some of that in our program. So I'm not at this point recommending or preferring any one particular option. Well, I know in our last... I have not worked on it in several months. I know in our last two conversations, uh, intermittently a few months went by and y'all were still looking at at charging copay for people to go to the clinics and the hospitals. 
And that's why I was asking for an update because in the past well, I, you've been very reluctant to, to project what might be the amount. And well, I, I would be reluctant to even do any of that because I've never um, come forward with any kind of recommendation for any kind of copay, whether it was in our facilities or with Hastings. But I have looked as part of self-help um, you know, lots of different mechanisms to be able to implement that tribal law. When I visited with you the last two times, I didn't hear about lots of mechanisms. I heard about one, and that's why I wanted an update, so thank you. Michelle, um, I had a lady, uh, well, her brother-in-law was telling me she went to the clinic and she, she had to do a copay. But, you know, I thought the uh, back to work, you know, thing that they, they do that, but I don't know whether her purse was that or not. I, it's the only one we did. Okay, yes. okay. I'm fine. I didn't ask her but, uh, after I talked. It was her. a back. It was the back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, have another question, please. Hey, Mr. Larry. Um, the back to work copay. What is mm -hmm. that amount for most people? Is that a it's the same amount? amount for all people, and it's ten dollars. Ten dollars. And it's per treatment. It's not per referral. Um, that's the program that is paying for a lot of things that have never been paid for before. Uh, we were never before able to pay for any kind of knee replacements, hip replacements, shoulder surgeries, orthopedic stuff, um, lots of chronic disease stuff that we weren't able to pay for before that we are able to pay for now. And it's a $10 copay for that whole treatment process. So it's not per referral. So if you have to go to the orthopedist five times, have a surgery, and go for three follow-ups, it's not eight ten dollars, it's one ten dollar. Okay. Yes. Got it. Thank uh, you. Melissa, I'd like to digress just a little back to the uh, the deal with about the cataracts and stuff that we talked mm -hmm. about. I just found out that there's a an eighty year old person who, who's a diabetic that's having that surgery done I think today in Muskogee and had to pay five hundred dollars down to, to get them I guess to, to move on it. So that might be something that uh, if you would give us that person's name we can check into the particular situation and see what that is because every situation is different right. I understand. That. thank you you bet next on our agenda we have uh, looks like three <coughs> items under new business and I think Dr. Graham is, is the uh, presenter on this or yeah and, and he is here with me too if there's more specific okay. Um, questions that need to be answered. Um, and Kim, if you want to go ahead and come on, come on up. And I don't know if everybody's met Kim Corbett. She's she's over our cancer programs, and she's been, I want to say, three and a half years, but it's three years. Okay. Um, and we've been happy to have her. We have two different resolutions. Um, the first one is on our breast and cervical cancer early detection program. And we have had this grant now since 1994. When we originally started out, it was a half a million dollars. This year, we're submitting it um, for 1.3 million. With that particular program, it's aimed specifically at women looking at prevention and early <coughs> detection of breast and cervical cancer. Mr. Garvin, I move for the approval. Second. Have second. a motion and a second to approve it. Uh, any discussion? All for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. And the second one is on our comprehensive cancer control pro program. Near, we've had it since 2003. We're asking for 300,000 from the grant. Um, it looks at a comprehensive cancer prevention plan throughout our 14 county area um, at preventing all types of cancers. And then this will hopefully allow us to get into some more. Um, actual programmatic dollars for treatment and, and detection. Move, move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any, any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Dr. Graham. The last item is an act relating to the amendment of LA in 1696. And uh, Mr. Thornton, would you like to make a comment about this? Yes, uh, I brought this act forward. <coughs> Joe Crinton, and <clears throat> what I've found out over the last four years being out talking to all of our citizens <clears throat> that we we do serve our people, but I think we can serve them better 
and the complaints that I get that we're not giving any of that funding out of C and E out of our game. And I think we could bring forward a five percent dividend additional to what we're getting now and uh, serve more of our children, serve our elders, handicapped, maybe maybe all of the Cherokees more additional if we bring these dividends forward. And earmark them especially for health, contract health. And earmark them in the case of uh, high services and uh, in the case of dental services. Uh, we, as far as I know, we haven't had a whole lot of hearing aid services in our programs. Uh, prothesis would be another thing that we could earmark these services. We could put some cancer in there. Uh, I think it would be showing the people that we're bringing forward funding out of the game to help our people. And, and it would be earmarked so that, that, that they would see this funding and it would help, help them and help all our, our Cherokees. Uh, I think I would like to take this and move it on to E and F. And, uh, and maybe talk about it some more there. Uh, maybe see what type of funding we could get and how much it would be. I've been quoted some different funding and I really don't know exactly what it would be, but uh, we could probably get closer to it there. And uh, I would like to make a motion to, to pass this and go to E and F and uh, see if we could uh, get some more. I know we're going to get some more remarks about it. I think it's something would help our people, and I think it's something would help our employees. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second to move this legislation on to uh, E and F, and I had Kelly back here with her hand up. Miss Watts, you'll be next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just became aware of this act, I think, uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, Melissa had shown me a copy of it. This is something we've talked about a lot, what level to set the dividends at, and to Mr. Thornton's comment about uh, being able to show that we're using gaming money in health care. Uh, Melissa was talking about one of the programs, uh, the Contract Health Back to Work program, which um, is funded through Gen Fund, probably wouldn't be possible if we didn't have the gaming dividend that we have. Um, I would just like to see us do some more analysis. Um, we do have a surplus in the budget right now, in the 07 budget, uh, before we go and change dividend acts without some input from the business side. Um, I would like to see us do some more analysis on this. Uh, we came before this council in January and laid out a very aggressive expansion plan for the gaming operations and that was approved by this council in the form of uh, an increased borrowing base for C&E. Um, so what I would propose is, is that we let um, get some input from the business side. I'll be happy to work with whoever from this committee wants to work on it and do some analysis before we pass this on. Thank you, Kelly. Ms. Watts? Move to table to next month's meeting. Second. Okay. Table takes precedence. I have a motion to table to next month and a second. Pardon me? And, and I understand the, the tabling, but what Mr. Thornton really said was he wanted to pass it to executive finance so people could do their homework and fully discuss it in that venue. And uh, I see no point in, in tabling it for 60 days when we can table it for, I mean, in, move it to the, to the ENF in three weeks. And then if it's not done, we could table it to the next month. And I just, I hope we don't table it. Uh, in response, Kelly, uh, I mean, ENFs are quite a ways away. I mean, it, it, you, you'd think we could... Uh, come to some resolution as far as uh, figures and all. Do you think that would be an adequate time? Um, ENF is about two weeks away. Um, 
um, just depends on people's schedules, who needs to be on this sort of review. Um, yeah, I just, I wish we had had some upfront discussions about this with C&E before yeah. we move forward with this sort of uh, recommendation. Oh, Ms. Farley. <clears throat> Someone from contract counselors is also being included in this discussion? I think so. Um, it, it, we all understand the need in health care, and Melissa has talked about how much progress they made in contract health and reducing the number of denials. Um, sometimes it's easy to to get caught up in the you know wanting to help people and, and throw some money at the problem, but you got to have the infrastructure to deal with that money. Um, so I think someone from contract health would also be advisable on this. Ms. Watts, would you be willing to move it to uh, to withdraw that table and let us move it to executive and finance? We could always table it at that committee meeting if that was what we came down to. I just, I mean, I feel like we're going to have to table it because I don't think that's adequate enough time for such a thing because we, as a body, I thought we'd committed to that analysis that provided that the jobs people would get from the money we spent would provide for their health care and not continue to just pour money into health care without getting people self-sufficient to do their own health care. That's my concern, and this is a much bigger analysis than what two or three weeks will allow. Okay. Uh, Mr. Larry. You know, I have a major problem with this. Our people don't need to wait on contract health and, and services. That's the majority and the bulk of what this council gets questions about, is how we can help our people either get back to work or just survive to maintain a residence at home be able to be self-sufficient in their own right to, be able for, to provide for themselves even in the, with the elderly in their daily living. And I think to prolong something like this, which is a very good, I commend you to counselors for uh, putting this forward. And I think that instead of delaying it and, and doing these tactics of delay, I think that we should get on with the business of the Cherokee people that aids them in being sufficient for themselves. And that's my opinion. Okay. Sensing uh, some division here, I want to ask for a roll call vote on the motion to table. Uh, would you call the names, please? All, Your those, Anglin, all yes. those in favor of, of tabling is, is yes. Your Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Audra Connor? No. Joe Crittenden? No. Meredith Fraley? Yes. Don Garvin? Yes. Ted Koskin? Taylor Keene? John Keener? No. Okay. Jackie Bob Martin? Yeah. Linda O'Leary? No. Navani Shopout? No. David Thornton? No. Kara Cotton Watts? Yes. Phyllis Shargy? No. <coughs> Six yay, eight nay. Uh, call for the question. Well, we had a motion to move this to executive and finance, and I also had a second. I don't remember who the second was. Me. Uh, you were the second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Division. Roll call. Phyllis Yargy? Yes. Caretown Watts? No. David Thornton? Yes. Navana Shephouse? <coughs> yes. Linda O'Leary? Yes. Jackie Bob Martin? No. John Keener? Yes. Taylor Keene? Chuck Hoskin? Don Martin? <laughs> Meredith Fraley? No. Nope. Joe Crittenden? Yes. Audra Connor? Yes. Jack Baker? Yes. Yo John Baker? Yes. Yo Angler? No. Nine yay. Five nay. It'll be moved to executive and finance. Seeing nothing else on the old business. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry. I have one question from Melissa. Uh, on the contract health, I had a letter I was looking for from a lady that she was denied and then she appealed it and then she got a letter from the appeals committee saying that she was approved. So when she took it to the clinic, she would say, you know, the bill, and then the lady said, well, I'm not paying this bill. Well, who makes the final decision on those uh, paying for the contract bill? <coughs> Do the workers? Um, to, an to, 
You know, it's, that's kind of a complex question because um, without knowing the details, uh, I don't know. I can't answer the specific, which I would love to do if you'll give me a copy of it and we can okay. follow through. Okay. But if the if the re, if the bill that she's wanting paid uh -huh. is the one that's associated with the <laughs> referral that was overturned and approved, uh -huh. then that's the decision. Uh, I think Kelly had a comment. I, I just had a, a request if uh, the chair would let me know who I need to get together on this group to work on this before the, uh, executive, the executive finance, finance meeting. Okay, can, we can do that after out there or okay. wherever. Okay, Kelly? Uh, Mr. Larry? I have a question on the list, Mr. Uh, when we discussed the copay uh, for uh, people that visit the health facilities and the clinics, and I know you said that no other work has progressed on it, but have you also researched to, to see what other tribes are utilizing the copay under the self-determination act? Uh, I don't recall that. I don't right. recall. It's okay. been too long since I did that. That's been okay. a year and a half ago, I think. So I, I can't recall <coughs> that off the top of my head. Thank you. Ms. Watts? Glad you're back up, Melissa. My question's for you. Um, I failed to ask about our cross, our jurisdictional issue. I know Mr. Patrick is working on it, um, but I believe we've been down that road before, so I didn't know where we were at where our next step was. I don't know that off the top of my head. I couldn't hear. I can. I just know that Kara asked about the Claremore jurisdictional issue, which is a policy issue and where we're at. Um, there actually may be a report in the health policy update, but um, I, I, you know, I think this was kind of trying to do an administrative type fix, <laughs> and um, the only other fix is a legislative fix, and that means we've got to either get it on a bill or we've got to write a standalone <coughs> bill, and either one of those are going to take substantial time. And it's just, what, I mean, we, you know, I know that Paula Ragsdale is on it. I know she met with Dan's office last week again about it. And it's just going to take some time. Sorry. I've got one last question. Ms. Shotbench. It'll be to the IHS facilitators. Oh, right. <laughs> I had a call the other day from a lady uh, who lives out of state. And she said she was, she came to Clamore. It was Clamore. And uh, then she was told they could no longer serve because she lives out of state. Is that? And I thought, you know, if you go to IHS facilities, you go anywhere. Is it CHS you're talking No, it, she went to Clamore. Uh, she said she always went to Clamore, and she said she was told she could no longer get services there at Clamore because she lived out of state. And I told her, I said, well, I, I don't know. I said, I thought, you know, IHS can get served anywhere, no matter where you live. But, uh, but that was the question. Yeah, I'll get you to come with the after as well. Okay. By way of announcements, uh, next meeting is on April 17th at 1 p.m. And uh, I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're adjourned. What was it?